Hello, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, I'll be doing question seven of November 2021, question two of mathematics paper one. And these are functions too. We have a, a parabola and some straight line there. So I'm going to read the statement, and then answer the question that follow. Okay, so let's go. A graph of f is drawn below. So this graph is drawn here, f, and we have that equation up there. Continues. The parabola cast the x axis at B and D and the y axis at G. They are saying our parabola here cuts the x axis at B and at D. It cuts the y axis at G. You can see here is our parabola. Here the x axis is cut at B and D and then the y axis at G. C is the turning point of F. So C is the turning point of our parabola F here, so you can see. Line AE has an angle of inclination of theta and cuts the x axis and y axis at A and E respectively. So they are saying the line AE, which is this bar line here, uh, have the angle of inclination theta and cuts the x axis at A and y axis at E. T is the point on F between B and G. They're saying there's a point T on our graph F here, right? This point is between B and G, which is between the Y axis, the Y intercept G and the X intercept B. Now we're done and then we have pointed everything out. So we're going to go to the questions now. Let's go. Write down the coordinates of B and D. So they want us to write down the coordinates of B and D. What is B and D? B and D is where F cuts the X axis, right? So those are the X intercepts. So we have F of X equal to X plus four times X minus six. This is your equation for F, right? So here at B and D, our f cuts the x axis right here and here. So we know that around the x axis, y is equal to zero there, right? So that means that our y, we know that our y is zero. So we have x plus four and x minus six. Therefore, x plus four is equal to zero or x minus six is equal to zero. That would mean that our x is equal to minus four or x is equal to 6, right? So that would mean that our coordinates for b is minus 4 and 0 because b is on the negative x uh, side of the x axis. And that of d is 6 and 0. So we have answered this question 7.1. Now we move to 7.2. Calculate the x the coordinates of C. What is C? C is the turning point of our function f, which is the parabola. So we want the x x the, uh, the coordinates of C, right? So we know that the x coordinate of C is the x of symmetry of this parabola. It is the x of symmetry of our parabola. And we know the x of symmetry is a midpoint between the intercepts or the midpoint between any two uh, uh, x values on the same horizontal line. So, to find this point here, it is the midpoint between uh, B and D. So, we want to find that x coordinate of the midpoint, and then we substitute it to the original equation f to find the corresponding y value. So, what do we have? We say, okay, x coordinate of the mid, uh, midpoint Midpoint, which is the turning point in this case, equal to x intercept 1 plus x intercept 2 over 2. Mm -hmm. Of the turning point, x turning point is equal to x1. What is our x1? x1 for d is um, 6 plus x2. Our x2 is minus 4 for b over 2. So this and this, this will give us 2 over 2. So our x coordinate of the turning point is 1. Right? So to find the y coordinate, 
of the turning point, we substitute this x value to find the corresponding y value. So we say, okay, f at 1 is equal to 1 plus 4 times 1 minus 6. So we have 5 times minus 5. So this is minus 25. So the, our coordinates for C are 1 and minus 25. These are the coordinates for C. Now I hope this is clear. So what do we do next? We go to 7.3. We go carry on 7.3. Write down the range of f. So we want us to write the range of f. What is the range of f? So uh, the range of f is, a, is all set of y values which our x values are sent to, which means it's the y values that are, are utilized by our graph. So if you can see our graph, here all the if um, if you take and a y value here. You see, you you will find you can find the corresponding. If you take this y value here, right, you will find the corresponding x value. If you take this y value here, find the corresponding x values, right. So this is true up until the last y here. You know our coordinates is one is minus twenty five, right. So this is the last y that we have. Um, that will have and this is the last one that will have the corresponding x value so after this point all these y values are not used by our graph all the y values below minus 25 are not used by, by our graph so the graph the y values that are used by our graph are all the y values from here going up so all the y values that are greater than minus 25 are the ones that are used by our graph so our domain is y is greater or equal to minus 25 or you can say so it's y is an element of minus 25 in p so that is our range so this or that so this is interval so we've done this go to 7.4.1 Let's read 7.4 You are given that theta is 14.04 and the tangent to f is perpendicular to AE So you are given this information here They are telling you that theta is 14.04 Right? And a tangent a tangent to f is a t is perpendicular to AE. Some tangent of at f at e is perpendicular <coughs> to AE. So there's some tangent here. Right. So let me read this again. They're giving you that theta is called 14.04. And the tangent to f at t is perpendicular to AE. So you are given this theta that is 14.04 degrees, right? And you are told that some tangent uh, to f, here this tangent, the black one here, is perpendicular to AE. So there's a tangent to f at t that is perpendicular to AE. That's what they're saying. So let's continue for 7.4.1. Calculate the gradient of AE and correct to two decimal places. So they've given you the angle of inclination, right? So they want you to find the gradient of AE, correct to two decimal places. So when you're given the, the angle of inclination, you know you can say, okay, my gradient M is equal to the tangent of that angle of inclination. So our gradient is the tangent of theta, which is 14 point. 4. Pass that in your calculator, you find that your gradient of AE is equal to the tangent of what? What is the tangent of 14 minus 4? The 
hundred fourteen point zero four. Zero point two five. Is it correct? Two decimal places. So it's zero point two five, which is equal to one over four more or less. So the value of a is zero point two five, which is a quarter. Okay. So seven point four point two. Let's go. Calculate the coordinates of t, five marks. So they want us to find the coordinates of what? Of t. That is what they want us to find. How do we do this? We say, okay, our function f and t are intersecting at that point, right? So it's more like a point of intersection. It is a point of intersection. So what is our equation for f? We know that our equation for f is f of x is equal to x plus 4, which is times x minus 6. If you multiply this out, we find that it's x squared minus 2x minus 24. Right? So that will be, this is this. And then for a tangent, you know for a tangent, your tangent is a straight line, right? So it's y is equal to mx plus c. But you, you can find what your m is because you are told that this tangent of yours is, is perpendicular to AE. So the gradient of AE is equal to 1 over 4, right? And you know that the gradient of AE times the gradient of our tangent, right, are equal to minus 1, the product of the two. So you know what this one is. This one is 1 over 4 times the, gra the gradient of the tangent equal to minus 1. So what does this give you? You have 1 over 4 m of a tangent. A tangent is equal to minus one. What does that tell you? This tells you that your your m of a tangent is equal to minus four. So you have your m of a tangent to the minus four. So your equation for your tangent is y is equal to mx plus c. You know what your m is? Your m is minus four which is y, y is equal to minus 4x plus c. This is your equation for a tangent, right? So at that point t, these two intersect. So we equate them. The point of intersection, the f of x is equal to y. So I'm going to use another color. It's not another color. So what do we have? Our f of x is what? It's x squared minus 2x minus 24 is equal to y. What is our y? It's minus 4x plus c, right? Transform this to the other side. That's x squared plus 4x minus 2x uh, minus 24 minus c is equal to 0. So to simplify this, we say, okay, x squared plus 2x minus, what is this? Uh, we have 24 plus c is equal to 0. So, how many times does our tangent meet our, our function f? By definition, it's a tangent. So you should touch it once. They should meet once. So what does that tell us about the nature of the roots or the nature of the solution of this equation? So the nature of roots of, of this equation, we know because they intersect once, the roots are equal, they are rational, they are here. That's what we know. That's for the nature of roots of, of that situation there. 
So now, because we know the nature of the situation, so what does that tell us about our discriminant? Question is, our discriminant should be zero, right? Our discriminant is zero. So how do we find the discriminant? So okay, it's b squared minus 4ac equal to zero. What is your b? Your b is 2 squared minus 4a. What is your a? It's 1. What's your c? Your c is, is minus 24 plus c equals zero. Right? Then we have 4 minus this and that plus 4 into 24 plus c equals to 0. Let's solve our c. So we solve our c. Uh, actually, oh, we don't have to find our c. We know our discriminant is 0 then. Right? Our discriminant is zero. So since our discriminant is zero, we can say okay, our solution to this equation. We can x equal to negative b over 2a, right? Plus or minus discriminant, but this is zero. So our solution will be negative b over 2a. So our point of intersection of intersection is negative b. What is our negative b? So it's negative. B, which is 2 over 2 into 1, which is our A. Therefore, our X is equal to minus 1, right? And our Y will be at, at minus 1, which is equal to minus 1, uh, plus 4, and X of minus 1, Six, right? So what do we have? We have three times minus seven. So this is minus twenty one. So our coordinates for our point T our the coordinates for the point T are minus one and minus twenty one. So T have the coordinates minus one. And minus 21. Found. So we didn't have to go this way. We didn't have to go this way. So we're done with this question. We move. We move to the next one. So this is 7.5. So I will clean the board and then proceed uh, with the uh, with seven point five. So I'll clean the board now. Okay. So now we we'll go to seven point five. A straight line G parallel to AE cuts F at K and R. Calculate the x coordinate of R. So let me read this again. A straight line G parallel to AE cuts F at K and R. Calculate the x coordinate of R. So we are told that a straight line G, which is parallel to AE. So we can say G is something like this. Right? So this is your G. This is parallel to AE. Cut our graph here at K. What is K? It's minus 3 and minus 9, right? And some R somewhere here. This is, this is R. So the one has to find the X coordinate of R. So, so when they tell us that G is parallel to a, line AE, what does that tell you? It should tell us that they have the same gradient. So which means M of AE is equal to M of what? Of G. Right? So which is equal to 1 over 4. We have discovered that already. We calculated this. So now what we need 
with the equation of the line G and then equate it to the award F which it intersects with to find the point of intersection. So we have okay y of g of x equal mx plus c, right? What is g? So g is y, what is so g of x is equal to 1 over 4x plus c. And what I'm missing is c now. Let's go and find c. So we have a point, one point on g, which is k. So that point k minus 3 and minus 9, right? So we can find the value of c. So minus 9 is equal to 1 over 4. And then minus 3 uh, plus c. So you solve for c here. So c is equal to minus 9, uh, minus 9 plus 3 over 4. So you see is equal to minus 33 over 4. So g of x is equal to 1 over 4 x minus 33 over 4. So now at some point your, your, your g and f they intersect so which means they are equal. So your f of x is equal to g of x. So your f of x is this thing here. g of x squared minus 2x minus 34 is equal to g of x, which is 1 over 4. x minus 33 over 4. Right? So what do we do? Okay. Let's multiply by 4 throughout to avoid any fractions. I don't like fractions. So what do we have? We have x4, x squared minus 8x minus 96 is equal to x minus 33, right? And we transpose these guys to the, to the left. So we have 4x squared minus 8x minus x minus 96 plus 33 is equal to 0. Right? What do we do? So that terms for x squared minus 9x uh, minus 96 plus negative 96 plus 33 plus negative 63 is equal to 0. Right? So what do we do? We Take this to our quadratic formula, x is equal to negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Is our x, x is equal to negative b. What is b? b is minus 9 plus or minus the square root negative 9 all squared. Minus 4, A, what is our A? Our A is 4, C is minus 63, all over 2A, which is 4. So we we'll that to our calculator and see what our X values are. Negative 9 plus equal to negative 9 squared minus 4. So x is equal to 21 over 4 or x is equal to minus 3. So the minus 3 is the one that we have that corresponds to what? It corresponds to r. Uh, is it r? to k, it corresponds to k, right? So this minus 3 corresponds to k. And this guy here is the x coordinate of r because these two guys intersect twice. So one is where k is, that x, this, uh, this minus 3 uh, 
corresponds to the x value of k, which means the other one corresponds to the x value of r. And I think we're done with that. We're done with this question. So, yeah.